and we're back. Tuesday, I think, yeah. Dynamic effort-ish bench, which is kind of more of a hypertrophy intent this week, but like we talked about on Friday, with Friday being a little bit fried, I'm going to be taking a step back and kind of going more towards a true-ish speed work intent. Still not quite there because that's not entirely what I need stimulus-wise right now coming back from the pack. But I also don't need to be cooking myself so hard with the high reps on my Tuesday that I'm sore and stiff and clunky on the Friday. And like, what we got to remember with coming back from an injury is that even though the weights are very, very, very light compared to when I was in shape, they're still heavy compared to where I relatively am training wise. And one of the things that's hard to balance with rehab is realizing that we can like overstep or at least overcook ourselves a little bit with weights that are very, or would have been very non-consequential prior to the injury. And that's where guys have trouble because they're like, why do I feel so crappy right now? Why do I feel like I need to take a deload even though I'm lifting light? It might be light, but it is heavy relative to your current abilities. And taking a step back today is actually going to be good for me, both on preparing for Friday, but I don't know if you guys can hear it in my voice. I'm a little stuffed up, a little bit sniffly, picked up a little bit of a cold. And as far as like training while sick, I'm not against it as long as you are not the guy that goes to a real gym and coughs all over people and is gross because that is gross. And like when I'm in the meat, when I'm in a meat prep, the last thing I want is like some guy coming in, like coughing all over the place just because it's like, dude, I'm in a meat prep. I don't want to get sick. It's so like when I'm sick, I don't want to be going to a gym and getting people sick. And like right now today, I'm not super coffee, I'm not super gross, but I am going to be training at home, which is why I'm really stoked you have a home gym. But kind of the drawback of training at home on a day like this is it's hard to want to get going. And like, maybe if you're like brand new and you're still like really fired up, you haven't had those days where you don't want to train, but the longer you're in this, the more you're gonna have those days where you're like, oh, I don't want to train. And it's not like, like so much of like not wanting to train, but more just like, I'm tired, I'm run down, work was long and shitty. And like finding that motivation to train can be tough. And like, if I'm going to a gym, like all I gotta do is step one is like the motivation to pick up my bag and get in the car. And then like once I'm in the car, all I gotta do is just drive. And then once I'm at the gym, I'm already at the gym, so I might as well train. But like when I'm at home and the gym's in the basement, it's like I gotta do all of those steps just like walking downstairs. And it, it's it's daunting sometimes. It takes a little bit of mental, I'm not gonna call it mental toughness, because it definitely is not mental toughness, but it takes a little bit of mental effort just to like pick yourself up and be like, okay, I'm gonna finish work, I'm gonna get off the couch, I'm gonna go downstairs, I'm gonna train on this day when I don't feel like it. And like, gotta just remember that <clears throat> on the days when you feel like this, like you don't need to push super hard, you don't need to crank super hard, but just doing something is going to be better for you than doing nothing and that's something that you do should be relative to how you feel like i i feel like i'm, I'm tired i'm run down i'm a little little sniffly but i'm not dying so that's something it, it's going to be pretty at least decent and if you are very sick that might mean yes skip the session but if i'm in a place where you know the not wanting to train is mostly for me just being a puss i probably should train if the not wanting to train is for me like legitimately being borderline hospitalized, that would be a reason to not actually train. But in terms of how training is going to look today, going to be still pushing more reps, more voluminous than a regular speed session, but not gonna be pushing deep, deep, deep into hard rep sets like we did last week. I think I'm gonna run like probably a six by 10 on comp bench with three different grips, gonna start narrow, out, wide, wide, made narrow again and that is a real ass kicker of a protocol that is kind of sort of speed work kind of sort of not speed work gonna run as little rest as possible and i'm gonna finish up this meal which is my normal pre-workout meal got the oats got the berries got about 50 grams of carbs from oats got about 25 grams of carbs from berries i'm gonna put in about 60 grams of protein from the MRE light protein powder. Gonna get this down and I figure we will cut to the first work set 
ish here right away. Spilt all over myself, so had to change the shirt, but got the meal down, coffee chugged. General warm up is warming up and kind of starting to wake up a little bit, so let's get rolling. Kaylin is going to make fun of me for this, but running 155 for the work sets here. And it's like, with being a little bit sick, with needing the bit of the reset, I don't need to kick my ass too much on this day. And like with this protocol, ass is going to be at least a little kicked by the end of the sixth set anyway. So got the timer on the iPhone. Let's see how long it takes me to get through the work sets. Set one smooth. Woo. Straight in three. Ah, starting to feel it. Yeah, starting to feel it. Oh, 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 oh boy. Oh. <laughs> Fuck. Last one. Holy guacamole. from set up to getting up so that's pretty okay gonna take the next three hours to catch my breath and then we'll run some overheads ah. 195 first work set Running these one pin higher than last week. And I'm not sure if it's a leverage point or if it's just a bit of a cold, but shit feels heavy. So I think I'll just go 205 for the next one. See how that one goes. <laughs> Let's go, wake up, wake up, wake up. gonna say something about how that felt heavy and I'm not sure if doing another set would be worth it but then I decided that I'm just tired and not doing another set would be lame so we're doing another set let's go Yeah, good call. Triceps next. Yeah, definitely a little more woken up now, so glad I took that set. Gonna run the triceps, a little bit more elbows out, a little bit more tape pressy this week for no reason other than I think it's gonna feel good. So let's run them. And like aiming kind of beside my face, so still getting decent amount of stretch. And yeah, it feels real nice. 
Still just an atrociously gnarly strength curve. Holy. <laughs> yeah. Next one, going up. One more there. And I don't know why, but my triceps have gotten really out of shape since the surgery. And I mean, I do know why I had a surgery and I didn't train my triceps worth a shit for a number of weeks, but it's like they took a way bigger hit than everything else did upper body wise. And it's frustrating because my triceps used to be such a strong point, but then I gotta remember that I had to work super, super, super freaking hard to make them a strong point. And I'm going to, logically, I'm going to have to work just as hard to bring them back. So, next set. And like thinking back to when my triceps first did start to become a strong point, it was right after I spent a summer in Ohio when I was 21 years old. And like the whole time I was there, like I was getting my shit pushed in with tricep work every single bench session. And it freaking sucked. It was so hard. My elbows felt so freaking thrashed. And my bench almost suffered a little bit in the short term because of it. But it's like, if a body part is out of shape, like we need to use it to bring it up. And doing that, it's like, I went from having like these shitty glass elbows that would hurt all the time, weak triceps, bench lockout that was atrocious to having elbows that stopped hurting and having bench lockout that felt unstoppable. And like, 
remembering that, it's almost like, yeah, I, I am in one of those spots right now where I do have to manage my pressing so that my pec is able to continue to improve, but I really do need to not shy away from hard triceps. So fuck it, let's do some pushdowns. And this is by far my favorite way to train pushdowns right now. Getting a little bit bent over, like really trying to like stack over the cable and just trying to press scap, push through tricep really hard. It's almost like teaching us to like flex serratus and lat with the tricep like we want happening on bench. And it kind of reminds me and feel of like one of those dip machines, except we're able to get deeper into the stretch, deeper into the tricep and it just blows the shit out of them by the end of the set and feels real nice on the elbows. Gonna run a front delt, side delt, rear delt, tricep now for no other reason than I don't wanna be down here for three more hours finishing this session. <laughs> Slow out of the bottom, hard contract at the top. those catch up fast and the key to making regular dumbbell delt raises work really 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 well is in the bottom where the leverages are easy you don't want to just like swing and momentum at the top you want to kind of go slow through where those leverages are easy so then you have to contract hard through where the leverage is hard because if you just like swing it through where it's easy the momentum into the top you're not really getting a a lot of mechanical tension, you're just using momentum to get there. So if you go slow out of the bottom and then let the contraction strength build as the leverages get more difficult, you're gonna get a real good pump with those dumbbells. Gonna run a couple more. Gonna get tricky on this one and start with the rears. Hopefully get a few more reps with them being fresher at the beginning. feeling it. Can hardly do a front now. Sides might have to get a little swiggy. Lots of pump. Slapped an extra five pounds on the adjustable bell, you know, progressive overload.
On some hammers. Another thing I've really had to fight with since the surgery is my serratus and getting my arm to feel like it's connected to my body during the bench. So I'm not just doing these push-ups for range of motion access, but I'm trying to really protract hard at the top and then catch with serratus and control the scap as I lower. And like the better I get at doing that, the better bench has started to feel. And with how squats have been going, there's two things I know. I need to get better at controlling ribcage pelvis orientation with a fully extended hip so I can unrack better. And I need to start loading ab work heavier to get that shit strong enough to support it. So this is me accomplishing both of those things at once. And key thing here is with the pullover, we wanna make sure that we're not like swinging the kettlebell out of the bottom and helping ourselves with momentum. We want this to feel like really, really, really nasty in the lower abdominals as we start to curl up. Definitely glad I trained, looking back to how I felt in the kitchen today. And for me at least, I know that if I have a day where I don't feel very good or if I'm tired or if, whatever something's up and I don't feel like training. At this point, at least I know that if I make it into the gym and if I at least start warming up and start doing something, just like the act of doing something lets me build some momentum and lets me feel a little bit better, lets me do that a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And like, it might not pan out amazing. Like today definitely wasn't great. Like it wasn't anything insane. It wasn't world beating, but it was good. It was a solid training session. And I'm like, that's all I need right now. And I'm stoked to have done. And like knowing how today panned out for how I felt this morning, like if I wake up tomorrow feeling better than I did today, I know I'll be able to at least do something decent for my, you know, speed lower session. And like, 
If I'm still a little bit coffee, if I'm still a little bit sniffly, I'll probably just do it here in the basement again, just so I'm not spreading shit around the gym. But if I'm not coughing, if I'm feeling a lot better, I'll head in, get some speedy squats and speedy pulls in. But you know what? We'll, we'll see how we wake up feeling and make that call then. And I think it kind of like comes back to the whole idea that this is a cliche, but powerlifting is a marathon, not a sprint. And I don't mean that in the like, go slow, take your time, enjoy the journey type thing that a lot of people say that. And I also don't mean it in like the Tim Grover ultra hardcore, like if you want to win the marathon, you need to sprint the entire time. But I mean it in the way of like looking at how actual competitive endurance sport operates. Like when we have people competing to win at a high level marathon, like yes, they are going hard pretty much the whole time. But they're, what they're doing is they're going at the hardest sustainable pace that they can and they're leaving enough in the tank so that when the time to pull the trigger comes, they are able to sprint, break from the pack and win the race. And it kind of becomes this bit of a art form in knowing what is the sustainable pace and at what point do we pull the trigger on going. And like right now, I just need to build the base, do what I can and just keep on chugging along, chugging along, chugging along, build the momentum week in, week out with training. And like a day like today, I think I really, really, really did accomplish that. And what I need to remember is that like I'm 17 weeks out right now. I don't need to be doing insane shit. I need to be building myself up so that when it does come time to pull that trigger, I can pull that trigger and I have room to climb. And where I see a lot of lifters get screwed up, like everyone wants to like wonder like, why am I peaking too early? Why am I not able to do better on meet day in the, than I do in the gym? Well, you see those same lifters doing things like hitting huge lifts at you know, 18 weeks out, 16 weeks out, 12 weeks out. And they're like, I squatted this at 12 weeks out. I'm gonna be so strong on meet day. And it's like, <coughs> it's easy to think that, but if you're hitting this huge number at 12 weeks out, you might not be as strong as you think you are. You might just be ahead of schedule. And it's like, instead of being, you know, at the bottom of the mountain at 12 weeks out and top of the mountain, your peak is up here. You might just be up here and you don't realize it. And you're going to run out of room to climb way, way, way too early in relation to the meet. So it's like peaking for powerlifting is a matter of knowing when it's time to push and almost like holding back as long as you can in intensity so that you're able to pull that trigger at the right time to ramp things up so that you actually can peak rather than just, you know, falling down the other side of the mountain way too early and getting your shit kicked out of the meat. So I think that's that for tonight. Going to go get a couple meals in, a little behind today, got two more meals left, got some work to do and we'll be back at her tomorrow.